Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Jan Schweinar, Jan Schweinar in English, as they call it. Uh, welcome, everyone, to the celebration of the 20th anniversary. Uh, it's hard to believe, but it is 20 years, 20th anniversary of Sergi. Uh, I'll be the master of ceremonies this afternoon. Let me start by introducing the panelists that we have here. On my right is Anita Tachi, who is a PhD from Sergi from 2000. And she's worked, she's now the principal economist in the office of the chief economist of the European Bank for Reconstruction and Development. Next to her is Professor Hampel, rector of Charles University, one of our founding institutions and institution that is above Serge. And next to him is uh, president of the Academy of Sciences of the Czech Republic, Professor Drahoš, and that's the institution that's uh, above EI. We're a joint workplace of the two. Behind me is uh, Dr. Professor Stepan Jureida, the director of uh, Serge EI. Next to him is Professor Richard Quant, who I always uh, uh, explain to you with trepidation who he is. He taught me statistics. So I always, when he calls me, I'm a little bit worried whether he's going to ask me for the Cauchy's Lemma or Theorem or something. Um, he was one of the founding fathers incognito in the sense that uh, he was the senior advisor of the Andrew W. Mellon Foundation, which was the first foundation that gave us funds, money, to launch Sergi. Next to him is uh, Dr. Josef Zieleniec, uh, also an economist, a founding father with whom we actually put together the idea of starting Serge EI and uh, were joined by Richard Quant and another person whose name so far is secret but whom you will encounter later during the program. So uh, with that, let me just give you a few words background in terms of what we were doing 20 years ago. <laughs> we basically <coughs> looked at the layout of the land and realized that the entire post-Soviet world did not have economists who were trained in the same way as economists in the leading Western institutions, and yet obviously the region would need a new generation of top-notch economists. So we decided that we would try to start an institution that would really be one of the very top institutions in economics, comparable to the best in the West. And uh, with that bold idea, we prepared a proposal and came to people like Richard Kwan and others and asked them to provide the funding uh, for that. At the same time, we came to Charles University and Academy of Sciences just a little bit later. And this joint venture started. And indeed, 20 years later, we are here to show you that we are very well on the way to fulfill the mission that uh, we set ourselves to do. So in order to show it to you, I'll ask Director Uraida to step forth and show us with a few slides. I didn't even realize I'm on the slide here. <laughs> so maybe we'll wait, because we do, don't want to miss this first slide for too long. No. All right. <laughs> I'll invite Stepan Ste to come and give us some uh, rundown here. Thank you. So let me welcome everybody here. Join Jan in welcoming everybody here in my role of Sergi I director in this palatial setting of the Economics Institute. And I'm truly happy to have this opportunity to present to you Sergi I, um, the Center for Economic Research and Graduate Education uh, dash Economics Institute. And as I'm sure you all know, we provide graduate education and economics research uh, for the post-Soviet region. Sergi I was originally established as a uh, joint workplace um, by our two mother institutions, Charles University in Prague and the Academy of Sciences, and I'm also very happy to, to be able to welcome here our distinguished guests, the you know, top representatives of both of these uh, mother institutions. Today, um, Sergi I consists of many programs and activities, of course, starting with our PhD program, our flagship program, so to say, but continuing with master level education, uh, with our research seminar series that I'll come back to later on, with our fantastic library, I invite all of you to visit it, it's on the ground floor, uh, with our recently ad added teaching fellowship program, which supports undergraduate education and economics throughout the post-Soviet region, uh, with our study abroad program, with our long-standing collaboration with the Global Development Network, and finally, the most recent addition to our set of activities, the IDEA policy-oriented think tank at the EI. I would like to start this uh, short description of what Sergi is with a few words about our exciting uh, researchers that we were able to attract here to Prague. Um, 
Our faculty members have obtained their doctorates, have done their graduate work at some of the best departments in the entire world. Uh, looking at the US, you know, University of Chicago, Princeton University, University of Michigan, University of Minnesota, University of Virginia, Pittsburgh. Uh, looking at the you know, European departments, London School of Economics, University College London, you'd be hard pressed to find better schools from which to attract faculty members. And of course, uh, our you know, professors uh, have diverse nationalities too. Our, our ability though to access this international job market and to bring um, researchers of this caliber rests and to therefore avoid the pitfalls of inbreeding uh, rests to a large extent um, on our de facto tenure system where our uh, external supervisory board provides the very important uh, faculty evaluation um, and you know, assesses performance of our, our researchers and also commissions further external reviews. Now, um, our executive and su supervisory board, as it's called, over the years um, you know, included some of the profession's most famous uh, people, starting with Professor Joe Stiglitz, uh, Nobel Prize laureate, um, continuing with Alan Kruger, who, as some of you may know, has been recently nominated to head the Council of Economic Advisors for President Obama, um, continuing with Professor um, Orly Eschenfelter of Princeton University, who is currently serving as the president of the American Economic Association. Uh, Richard Blondell, uh, the, the chief um, or, um, principal um, economist of the um, uh, Institute for Fiscal Studies and a long-term head of the economics department at University College London, and, and so on and so forth. The list is long, and I won't be able to you know, do everybody justice. Now, the um, quality of our professors is what allows us and has allowed us over the years to attract some of the brightest students and most talented students from throughout the post-Soviet region. And we've, now, that's very important for any graduate program or a research uh, institution. As you can see, our students truly come from throughout the uh, entire post-Soviet world, um, you know, less than half from Central Europe, but the other large groups would be, you know, for, uh, former Soviet Union, the Balkans, um, the uh, Caucasus as well. And recently we've added students from some more exotic countries in, on, from both most and least developed countries of the world. Every year today, um, almost 250 students participate in our various programs, half of uh, whom are female. And our PhD students uh, regularly spend part of their studies visiting some of the world's best and most prestigious departments. I won't go through the list of examples of where they you know, went on their mobilities. Um, you know, an interesting fact is that about 20% of our students have found their life uh, partner. Here it's Sergi I, so, you know. <laughs> so we're, we, you know, we only hope that they're as successful in that dimension of their life as they're successful in their research careers. Uh, well, alumni placement, you know, what can you say? We're immensely proud of our alumni placement. We think we really punch well, well above our weight. Um, as you can see from this pie chart, our students are able to follow a wide array of diverse careers, starting with international organizations, continuing, of course, with the academia, with universities and research institutions, both in Western Europe and in Central and Eastern Europe. Uh, continuing on to central banks um, and uh, governments, where, where they provide valuable analysis for, for you know, economic policy. And uh, about a third of our graduates have found fantastic careers in the private sector, again, both here in Central Europe and, and in the Western world. However, the most important fact about our alumni that I want to stress is that the majority of them do actually stay and help this region, Central and Eastern Europe, the post-Soviet world, to go on its uh, su successful path towards uh, you know, um, being a developed uh, economy and, uh, and a democracy too. So um, maybe um, this is the right time for me to try to highlight some of our best placements, starting with academia. Uh, Sir GI graduates now work as professors, some of them are actually tenured, even people in this room, um, you know, at, at prestigious departments uh, at Northwestern University, Tilburg University, University of British Columbia, University of Bonn, Arizona State, uh, Innsbruck, Vienna. Those are, as you know, those of you who come from this profession, those are, you know, fantastic placements. Uh, for a place of our size that you know does not operate you know in the center of, of research in the UK or in the US, equally important uh, or fantastic has been our success in, in placing graduates in international organizations. 
and I'm proud to say that uh, we do believe that uh, SIRGI has placed the highest share of its doctoral um, you know, graduates in the IMF uh, compared to any other economics department or institution in the world. Now, we have been equally successful in, in, in placing our graduates at the World Bank, the European Bank for Reconstruction and Development, in consulting companies, or some of them have gone on to have fantastic careers, and obviously in high-ranking positions in both central banks and commercial banks throughout the region. The um, environment that, that SIRGI offers its students and, and professors obviously must be conductive to high-quality research. Uh, how do we know we have reached our goals there? Uh, well, uh, early on, in the first decade at least, SIRGI was best known for its important research on transition economics. In particular, it covered topics such as the effects of privatization, uh, labor relocation and uh, returns to schooling, or uh, the efficiency of stock markets. But in the last couple of years, Search EI has been able to branch out to all fields of modern economics, including behavioral and experimental economics. Uh, we have an extensive research agenda in macroeconomics. Uh, there's still lots of work following up on the early transition-related uh, work in, in, in the area of labor economics. And lately, oops, lately we've also uh, become very successful in game theory, especially in coordination problems. Now, how do we know this is high-ranking research? Well, um, 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 judging from uh, recent uh, international and independent research rankings, uh, this place uh, somewhere between the fourth and sixth uh, percentile, either uh, you know, using the Social Science Research Network in the world, and, uh, among about 1,200 uh, economics departments or, or um, institutes. And according to the uh, REPEC ranking, we, we we're in top six in Europe. Looking within the Czech Republic, uh, SIRGI uh, researchers have produced over the last five years uh, close to three quarters of um, publications in the top third of our profession's journals, in the top third quality, uh, which I would argue is the most relevant type of research output. And, and this has been achieved with, uh, for, the, for the most time, fewer than 20 uh, you know, full-time economics faculty members. So you know, we <coughs> believe those are fantastic achievements for a place of our size. Our accomplishments have been recognized um, repeatedly uh, and throughout the world. Um, let me mention on, that on top of the high research rankings that I already covered, uh, SIRGI has obtained a permanent absolute charter from the New York State uh, Department of Education, uh, which really certifies or testifies to the quality of our, our PhD and master level education. And students of SIRGI thus obtain not only a, a Czech PhD diploma, but also one that's uh, valid in the United States of America. Uh, SIRGI has been designated as a, you know, a center of excellence by both the USAID and the European Union. Uh, we have been very active in various EU grant and research schemes, framework programs, and the first European Research Infrastructure Consortium. And lately, or most recently, um, we were praised by an independent um, case study conducted within the uh, um, International Audit of Czech Republic's research and development. Now, we use our international recognition in large part to provide value for the community, both you know, regionally and here in the Czech Republic. Um, what do I mean? Well, first of all, as I already mentioned, but I cannot stress that um, enough, um, most of our graduates remain in the region. So, uh, you know, for, we believe it's very important uh, for economists of, of high quality, those who have been exposed to modern economics, to stay in the region and, and help with uh, economic, social, uh, education, and health policies. Now, uh, least, um, uh, last couple of years, uh, we have been uh, actually growing another um, uh, program under the headlight of, of teaching economics, where um, uh, SIRGI uh, and its sponsors helps to support undergraduate education in economics uh, throughout the post-Soviet region. Currently, this program supports, uh, uh, I believe, about 70 courses in over 20 universities in, in uh, nine countries, uh, including Georgia or Kyrgyzstan and, of course, the Czech Republic. This program also helps to support Western-educated um, economists uh, return back to typically their home countries in Eastern Europe and or the Balkans. Now, we also give to the region through our uh, continuous and long-term partnership with an international organization called the Global Development Network, which operates uh, a grant scheme 
that, uh, that aims to support and build research capacity in economics and social sciences in the entire region. I, I have to mention our fantastic uh, seminar series where every year we bring over 50 um, top-notch economists who present their frontier research here. Those seminars are obviously open to public. And over the years, we have brought here over 10 Nobel Prize laureates. We have organized uh, at, at least four major international conferences with three, 400 participants each. <coughs> Our library, we believe, is the best library in, in the region for economics and social sciences, and, and it serves, obviously, not just the Surge GI community, but hundreds and hundreds of, of clients from you know, local universities, mainly Charles University and, or the Academy of Sciences. And lately, um, we have also become very active in providing policy advice to the Czech government. I'm very happy to say that three of our faculty members over the years have served on the National uh, Economic Council, which advises our government on, on reforms, and uh, our, the latest addition to our set of activities, the IDEA Think Tank, provides uh, policy um, uh, advice based on evidence, uh, uh, not on ideology. We also face challenges um, uh, for our you know, future uh, growth and, and, uh, and quality maintenance. Uh, as many of you probably know, uh, the Czech Republic um, actually lags behind uh, other European countries in terms of its funding, uh, both for research and per student. Uh, you know, I may say that uh, social sciences are also relatively underfunded as a share of the total budget in the, in the country. Um, we also face severe funding challenges uh, for our uh, doctoral program because the country has recently uh, terminated a, a long-term um, scheme of basic research centers that have allowed places like us to fund the, uh, demanding long-term uh, studies of, of, um, you know, of doctoral students. Unfortunately, we also face challenges on the uh, research funding front where this country has um, uh, implemented a um, um, a thorough reform of, of research funding that, unlike any other country in the world, actually uh, bases research funding not on assessing the quality of most types of output, but on, should I say, counting the pages. Now, obviously, this introduces perverse incentives, especially in social sciences. Uh, as an example, even though, as I mentioned already, Sergi I would produce 70% of the top third quality of research publications in the country, if one were to apply this new research funding scheme crudely, uh, we would only get 16% of the overall uh, economics uh, share of funding. So it's no surprise that uh, this entire scheme has been recently called into question by an ongoing um, international audit of um, R&D funding in the country. Looking into the future, um, we have um, achieved quality standards that I believe uh, give us both the opportunity and almost a moral obligation for growing, and in particular for increasing the number of students, um, branching out into new types of education programs, and overall increasing the impact of SIRGI on both academia across the region and on, on public policy and applied research. And so we have uh, you know, already started in all these activities, but uh, our strong conviction is that uh, you know, given the quality base that we have achieved, we have to move forward. We also have to stay um, you know, very active in, in improving our quality of research because the competition is obviously not standing still. Our kind of imminent goal is to enter and stay within top 20 departments in, in, in Europe. And over the next 20 years, uh, you know, we have to, uh, you know, our ultimate goal is to return to the original goal that was set by the founding fathers to be among the top 20 in the world. Now, we also have to make sure that we remain the first choice for the most talented students from Central and Eastern Europe, which is essential for maintaining our equality. And we have this opportunity uh, these days to attract some first-class researchers who are in larger and larger numbers uh, ready to re return back from uh, the US or, or you know, some of the best places in Europe. And we have to make sure that we're able to attract um, you know, high caliber, high quality faculty members looking into the future. So to summarize, what have we achieved in the 20 years of, of Sir GI between 1991 and 2011? We have gone from a place that started with 12 students to a place that serves almost 250 students every year. From a place that serves students from seven countries to uh, a department or institution that attracts students from 30 countries. We have gone from a place that started with very few founding fathers and basically relied on visiting professors in the early years to a place that has 25 full-time 
uh, faculty members in presence, and six long-term visiting professors. We have gone from a place that started its research basically on, on transition topics to a, a research institution that covers all fields of economics research today. We have started with you know, an empty publication record, and now we place among top 4% of economics departments worldwide. We have started with a place that only operated its PhD program, and now we have this array of other education and, and other activities that I have you know, already uh, covered in, in my brief presentation. So we, have, we started with, a, you know, with no alumni, and today we're immensely proud of the you know, 300 master level graduates that we have and the 114 PhD alumni. So, summing up, you know, given what we have achieved in the first 20 years of SIRGI, just think what we can do together in the next 20 years. Yeah. Thank you, Stepane. I think this was uh, right on target. And next in the program, we'll have a few reminiscences of the founding fathers, uh, what it was like uh, when this was all being conceived and started. We'll start with Josef Zielaniec. Josef, would you like to stand up there or have a Thank microphone? You. Go there. Great. So, Thank you, Jan. So it's a moving moment in uh, the uh, life of everyone to see his uh, dream comes true. Uh, for me, uh, it's uh, really um, something exceptional to have a chance uh, to participate in this birthday, birthday party of uh, Search EI. When we first started discussions with Jan Sveina about the difference between the communist uh, economics as uh, was performed here behind the Iron Curtain and the mainstream uh, economics uh, from the Western world. Uh, we started these discussions in 1988 and the gap was uh, enormous. We realized that uh, this is something, these are two different worlds. Um, the older uh, colleagues remember it, the mainstream of communist economics was poorly scholastic uh, discipline which with mission to provide um, uh, to provide ideological support for um, uh, this economic uh, decisions of the communist uh, rulers. Um, it had nothing to do with uh, uh, with uh, empirical verification uh, with, uh, with uh, measurement, which was uh, basis of the uh, mainstream Western uh, economics at the time. So we continued this discussion on the beginning of 1989. So the changes already uh, started. Uh, so uh, we were allowed to organize uh, the uh, microeconomics conference here in uh, Liblice uh, near Prague. Uh, this was the first meeting of the Western uh, economists and um, uh, economists from uh, Czech Republic here, uh, from Czechoslovakia, here on our soil. Um, famous professor from Princeton, Richard Quant, arrived at that time. So it was for us important also for the future of this project. After the end of the Cold War after the um, end uh, uh, of the communist system, we started with Jan Sveinar immediately discussion about the main problems which we should uh, we should open here in discussion. And we realized that the key problem is education in economics, that this is important not only for economics itself but for the uh, reform of the uh, society. Um, we started to wrote the first proposals in, I think, January or, or February of 1990. We approached the first rector of the Charles University. Fortunately, it was a bright man, a um, man who wanted to change um, uh, the education 
in university in economics. Professor Palosh was uh, one of the most important persons uh, in the beginning of this institution. Richard Quant, whom we know from Liblice conference, um, was also uh, at that time advisor to the Mellon Foundation. Uh, he was the second person who was key for beginnings of the uh, of these institutions. Uh, you know, despite the big support from uh, university, from uh, Rector Palos, uh, from Mellon Foundation, uh, it was extremely difficult to establish such institution. I, as a first director of uh, search, I realized that um, there are two most conservative institutions um, on the world, the churches and the universities. It was, it's, it's simply fact, it, maybe it's positive and important in peace times, but it's extremely big problem in the times of revolutions. Uh, so, but despite the difficulties, uh, we succeeded uh, and now we uh, we can celebrate the 20 years of search. Uh, 20 years is a lot of time in uh, the life of every person, but for, the, for institutions like search, it's only the beginning. We should realize it. And uh, I, I am uh, really happy that the current director, Stepan Juraida, um, looks ahead and uh, spoke about celebration in 20 years. And uh, I hope that uh, uh, the, uh, the vision which he described to be one of the best 20 institutions in economics education in the world, we can somehow achieve. So, happy birthday. Many of you, I don't have to introduce Richard Kwan, but for some of you who may not know him, uh, a remarkable uh, uh, Renaissance man in all respects. Uh, he uh, born in Hungary, studied in the United States. When I came to Princeton as a graduate student, he was the director of graduate studies, and for all of us, he was just, just a role model. Never fathomed that a uh, few years later, when uh, we will need money, he will actually be sitting right at the source of money at the Andrew W. Mellon Foundation. So we didn't hesitate to come and say hello. And uh, Richard shook his hands, and uh, out came uh, wonderful, wonderful contributions, which enabled many of you from the earlier years to actually exist here. Richard, your turn. Thank you. Thank you very much. I, I feel really very nostalgic about being here uh, because the first time uh, that I was involved with a surge was, of course, in 1990. And if you see uh, tears rolling down my cheeks, it's not because of the nostalgia, because I have hay fever. So uh, don't, I, I'm not going to go so far as to weep. But it was an incredible heroic period so long ago it boggles the mind to think that most of the students here were not even in elementary school. And they have probably hardly any feeling as to what it was like to live in Czech society back in 1990 or even earlier. Uh, when I got the first inkling that uh, something was cooking here, and it came from Jan, uh, I, I was very interested because I thought that he was the one person who would be capable of bringing this off. I'd also known, of course, uh, Joseph earlier. Uh, and I just, as I was looking through my files, I came upon the final proposal uh, to the Mellon Foundation from Surge. It was dated July 2nd, 1990. And it was an amazing document. It was obviously expressing a very strong need and when you think of it, it was trying to do which sane people would have considered impossible. You don't start a new institution ex nihilo and expect it to last more than a few years. Most of the people who were very enthusiastic about supporting uh, institutions and institution building in Central and Eastern Europe in the United States in the early 90s were referred to in, in Warsaw as the Marriott crowd 
They came to the Marriott for three days, they dispensed their advice, and then they disappeared. And then what happened to that advice, God only knows. And we saw the possibility of creating something that was permanent. Well, if you think of the, the problems that had to be faced, uh, it was enormous. You had to think of uh, personnel. You had to think of program structure and program content. You had to think of physical plant and equipment, building, libraries, computers. You had to figure out what the internal governance would be. You had to decide what the role of this institution would be inside of Charles University. And one of the things that I, I learned to appreciate in working for the Mellon Foundation, that we never abandoned an institution after an initial funding. We welcomed them coming back asking for more money. And I actually sort of, for a number of years, uh, was a kind of a hands-on donor, and I remember many unfriendly letters that I had written to Rector Palosh or to his successor, Rector Mali, when I thought something wasn't going right. But ultimately, I think the proof in the pudding is, is, is what, what uh, Stepan has explained. The, the place works. It has been a success. It was a permanent institution, and there are not many like this in Central Europe. Uh, if I may mention a competitor, the Central European University, which also started originally in Prague, I didn't think that could be done either. And it was done, and I note that it had substantially larger financial resources, thanks to the generosity of George Soros, than, than uh, Sir G.I. ever did. So all I can say is that it was, this was a fantastic success from the Mellon Foundation's point of view, and it was an enormous pleasure to work with, with all of you. Uh, I have to take one piece of credit. At one point, I think it was in 1990, but I no longer remember exactly, uh, <clears throat> my old friend, uh, Randy Filer, came to me and said, you know, there is this thing starting in Prague. Uh, should I join it? And at that point, I said, yes, I think you should. So you can thank me for, uh, for Randy. <laughs> God only knows what would have happened if I had said, no, don't bother. Anyway, thank you very much for the opportunity to reminisce with you. It was a fantastic occasion to, to help, the foundation, uh, to help uh, Sergi to get started and to flourish. Those were really incredible moments. I remember at one point Richard Quant calling me, it was at three in the morning, and I really did think he was going to ask me for Koshi's lemma or whatever. Uh, now this was the early days actually, you see the red phone directly to the uh, rector <laughs> and president of the academy and Mellon Foundation. So we were, it's amazing, I still have those glasses. I think they're coming back into fashion now. Uh, <laughs> yeah, they're right. so, uh, so no, but Richard called you know, at three in the morning and said, are you corpus menti? And I said, well, it depends for what purpose, right? And uh, he says, you will probably be getting money. So I got up and we finished uh, the right revision of the proposal and indeed that was the first tranche that we received and that's how we got started. Um, it was amazing. We used to work really sometimes 24 hours. I remember flying from Pittsburgh. I was in at the University of Pittsburgh, so I would fly overnight, take a shower in Amsterdam in the morning before changing the plane, coming here, having my tie and jacket and starting working. So yesterday actually I flew in from Detroit, so I did the same thing. This morning I went to the place in Amsterdam, took a shower, came here just to kind of uh, live through the uh, experience again. So those were, you know, hectic days. We established the culture where there wasn't the same Western culture. There was a culture here, as you just described, but the fact that we, for instance, opened the library for 24 hours, so students could work anytime, basically, and we encouraged them to use it fully. So all these were completely new things, working in shifts, things of those, those that nature. Um, it was the beginning of the fax era, and we brought in the first fax. Of course, two years later, it was all electronic, all email and everything. But all these things that you see here were amazing. So this is how we looked 20 years ago. Uh, there is Josef Zelenets, and uh, there's uh, you know, all the people, uh, Michal Maestri, who was then very actively with us as well, 
Rector Mali is there, Petra Buskova, with Josef Kotrba was very active here at the time as well, a few other people. So uh, this was the opening of the library. This was uh, very important. We became the best library in the region, recognized as such. And uh, so those were really heady days uh, at the very beginning. Uh, so what I'll, what I'll do now is um, pass on the word to uh, one of our finest products, to use an economics jargon, uh, Anita Tachi. Uh, she is, uh, if you like, the median voter uh, approach. She got her degree in 2000, so it's roughly exactly half point. So she represents all the generations of uh, former students. She, uh, from here, went to the European Bank of Reconstruction and Development, which itself was a an institution that was sort of being established and rising, trying to find its place. And under Anita's tutelage, it developed successfully, and Anita is now the principal economist there. So uh, this is a tribute to her as well for institution building, both here and there. Well, um, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. I think it's. Uh, it's a great honor to, to be asked to talk on behalf of all my, uh, my colleagues and friends and all the alumni uh, for the Surge AI, and I think an honor probably I don't deserve. Um, I, um, I would like to start by saying that um, the most important asset that the Surge AI is given to all these graduates is the highest possible education we can find in the world. Um, it is. Surge AI stands up there with the most recognized institutions uh, that we know from the United States and uh, from, from Europe. Um, I can say that because of my experience when I came here uh, from Albania, I didn't have any economics background whatsoever. I studied mathematics back in Albania. Um, and when I came here, uh, then after the second year, I had, I was among the luckiest ones to be sent to New York, the Stern Business School, for uh, working on my thesis. And where, there I also uh, participated in some of the lectures. Uh, and I found that despite the very, very competitive character of especially New York City, uh, you, you can see that the knowledge that I have gained from uh, Sergi I was very much the same as all the graduates of, of uh, Stern Business School at the time. Uh, then I went on, of course, after finishing uh, the PhD here, or actually at the same time, went to London to the European Bank for Reconstruction and Development. Uh, until then, most almost exclusively in the Chief Economist Office, everybody, all the economists were from the London School of Economics, and I think that was because uh, the Lagoin at the time of um, the chief economist, Nick Stern, was from London School of Economics. Willem Beiter, who just came, was from London School of Economics. So most of the graduates, most of the, uh, the economists were still from London School of Economics. I was very much positively surprised after my uh, presentation of, um, of the paper that I did for my job interview that many people actually commented that they know how high uh, quality uh, the, the Surge AI students are. And that was a sort of warming also that I probably will get the job. <laughs> um, so it is because of, 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 of Surge AI. And uh, nowadays, the Chief Economist Office, uh, people come from different uh, education, not only from London School of Economics, but the common theme is they come from the most well-known uh, uh, universities like Harvard, Oxford, Cambridge, MIT, uh, and I feel comf very comfortable being in between all these uh, very highly graduated. Uh, so I think Sergi is um, uh, really at par in terms of uh, the level of education that it provides its graduates uh, with the most recognized universities uh, in the world. And that was, uh, Shavani Wright already proved it from so many recognition, also, also official recognition from uh, from uh, different institutions uh, of that achievement. Um, I, I'll just also want to say that that level of education uh, is actually uh, helped, how to say, or was the main uh, competitive advantage, so to speak, nowadays of Sergi I, where at the beginning, so to speak, um, the competitive advantage was that it was a unique institution uh, that provide a new, unique place um, in for, for people from the transition economies which didn't have any opportunity to study somewhere else. 
But with time, there are much more opportunities provided from students from transition economies. But it's the highest education that this institution provides that actually that makes it competitive uh, nowadays. And it's much more desirable, it's still desirable to come and study uh, in SOGI. Um, and of course, approve is also its placement, job placement, as any other institution, uh, the job placements of their graduates. Not only as uh, the director mentioned that they are all everywhere, but they also have uh, made a very good career in their, their place where, where, where they work, all the graduates of, of Surge, Surge UI. Um, finally, I'd say that the success of this school actually has been a role model uh, also for other schools in, in the region. And um, as part of working for the EBRD, I've, I've been, study, I've been uh, traveling in different countries in the region. Uh, in the Central European region, because where, that's where the bank works on. And um, in particular, I've, I've gone to visit several times the ISED, which is International School of Economics in Tbilisi, uh, and I also visited the Kiev School of Economics. Both of them have followed the same model as SERGI, uh, and I've had also first-hand experience working with students from ISED in Tbilisi. Uh, uh, and their, their level is really very, very high, and naturally many of those graduates actually, which come only from masters, come and study here in, uh, in, in Surge UI as, uh, for a PhD program. Um, and I also traveled in Central Europe and talked to many administrators and government uh, representatives that across the region, the Surge UI has a very good reputation, it's a very high level um, institution. So finally, I would like to close by saying that Sergei I've actually has changed my life. Uh, I've, um, not only because it, I've I also found my future husband here, although not, <laughs> not uh, a Sergei student, uh, but um, uh, it gave me the opportunity to study in this beautiful city, uh, to know so many very highly intelligent people and make friends, uh, to, to study in this beautiful um, building, um, and uh, and, and uh, my, my memories from this, in, from this time here are not only hard work, but also loads of fun and laughter. With the sort of saying that we'd really work hard and, and also uh, live very, we have a, a very, very lot, lot of fun and laughter together with our friends. Um, and uh, if one of the memories is that our codes for final exams, the, the name codes were beer names. So, um, <laughs> Uh, so much for the representation of, of this particular city and country. Um, so I'd like to finish by saying that really um, I'm a very, very proud of uh, graduate of Sergi. Uh, it is a unique institution that gives opportunity to people which don't have the same opportunity as other students and at that it gives the best education available. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Anita. I think you've spoken for many of your uh, colleagues and fellow students and alumni. Uh, now is the time to uh, give the floor to the representatives of the two institutions that are our parent institutions and uh, that have really provided the uh, foundation for on which we are building and have provided the uh, shelter for us, the institutional setting and everything. And without them, basically, we wouldn't have been able to accomplish what we have accomplished. So let me invite them. Maybe we'll start with Rector Hampel first, and uh, then we'll have President Jarf. <coughs> dear colleagues, uh, dear guests, dear founding fathers, ladies and gentlemen, it's a real pleasure to, to have an opportunity to greet, to greet you on such a festive occasion. Uh, I think it's a role of, of a rector on occasions like this to uh, declare uh, how proud he or she is uh, about the institution which celebrates. And I think uh, there's reason, uh, th there are reasons, as we also saw in, in the presentation, to really do so for me today. Uh, I think uh, you might not know it, but in the Czech Republic, uh, there is a, sort of a general understanding that when you want to study economy, there is a specialized university for economy called University of Economy. And it's a university uh, with, with many, many, many students. But if you really want the high level, the best uh, economy education, 
uh, in this country, you have to come to Charles University, search and, and uh, the, the sort of sister institution uh, economy uh, at the Faculty of Social Sciences. Uh, even though these two institutions together don't have too many students, so they can concentrate on quality. And in this respect, I think one thing that has to be congratulated for uh, is that uh, search uh, succeeded to avoid the risks of excessive massification, which otherwise is uh, something that is not handled very easily in the Czech Republic and, and tends to, uh, to threaten quality in, in higher education. Uh, this is very much related, uh, or, or this is fundamentally related to, to research done, done here. Uh, and uh, I think one aspect we should keep in mind is that when search was established 20 years ago, there wasn't much research in general, not only in economics, but in general at the universities. The Soviet system uh, in higher education, which was here during the communism, uh, pretty much chased science research away from the universities. And one of the, one of the important things to do after the end of communism was to return research, to return science back to the universities. And one of the great tools for this was the collaboration with, uh, and, and in some cases, uh, sort of an integration with the Academy of Science, with, which at that time was pretty much the only uh, uh, scientific institution in the country in, in the real sense. And, and Search One was at that time and still is uh, a prime example of a successful collaboration on, on this front. Uh, in, in this sense, I think it's, it's all sort of a uh, good uh, practice example maybe for, for future as well. Uh, thanks to this, uh, or partly thanks to this, I think uh, Search contributes its share, and maybe a little bit more than its share, uh, to, to the overall uh, fame of Charles University in Prague. Uh, just recently, the Times Higher Education uh, Supplement published another uh, year of um, uh, university's evaluation uh, or ranking, and, and Charles University clearly, clearly is uh, established as one of the best universities in, in Central Europe, and, and definitely the best university in post-communist uh, Central Europe. Uh, and that's definitely due to research and uh, in, in this sense, uh, search is, is uh, the right place. Uh, as I said, this is a good example of collaboration between uh, universities in general and Charles University in particular and the Academy of Sciences. We collaborate, we like to collaborate, but we also in, in a sense sort of compete and so for me, it's always great when I can present something where I beat the chairman, the president of uh, Academy of Sciences, and I guess I have the opportunity now. Uh, I'm sorry. <laughs> and, um, and the thing which I, which I have uh, uh, as an advantage over the Academy of Sciences is that unlike the president of Academy, I have here my predecessor who was here when this all started. Already mentioned Professor Paloš, and I think now is the great time to give him the floor. Thank you. Thank you, Rector Hampel. So yeah, it may have seemed until now that there were just three founding fathers, uh, but there is a fourth musketeer, actually. And it's Rector Paloš, who has agreed to come at the last minute. Uh, he has recovered from an illness and is with us, and so we kept him secret, and now we'll give him the floor and have him say a few words, because he was there with us. He was really there at the very beginning. He, in fact, posed me the most fundamental question. When Josef Zelenets and I came to visit him at the beginning, he said, is economics a real science? <laughs> and, you know, I first started laughing, then I realized this was a really, you know, very good question. And I remember telling you that, yes, we had you know, theories, we were testing hypotheses, and you said, perfect, I've just abolished the Institute of Marxism and Leninism, we'll take you in and you'll be, you'll be the new economics, economics place. So, Radime, if you were willing to say... May I stay here? Yes, stay here, sit down and just... I stay. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, dear friends, 20 or 21, 20 years 
it is possible. I feel it as yesterday. It was era after half century ideological, ideological totalitarian enslavement. Era of comeback, political freedom, and of rejoining Charles University to the family of Western universities. I visited many of them. Among them also the, the, the university in Pittsburgh. I was invited by uh, rector, by President Poswar. Is what Poswar? And me accompanied Jan Sweiner. Since this meeting, we were standing out for foundation of an institution of a serious institution for serious economic studies. You know that during the total uh, uh, times was allowed only tending ideological handcuffed hybrid. No, we have search. Sergei, Sergei, you say. Experience it and competent working compartment. Be successful in the next decades. Thank you. Thank you very much. And I will ask uh, President Drahosh to come and say a few words. Uh, honorable guests, uh, uh, ladies and gentlemen, dear colleagues, I will ni neither start to uh, discuss with uh, Rector Hampel uh, about the success of different institutions, nor try being a chemical engineer to solve the problem whether, chemist, uh, whether economy is a science or not. <laughs> Uh, but, but anyway, let me to use this opportunity of 20th anniversary of Search AI to uh, put uh, it in a little bit broader context. Uh, uh, well, I know from the literature that President Masaryk and uh, subsequently President Edward Benesh used to say, where could have we been? Would we have another 20 years of peace? I'm therefore very glad that we have been given at least those 20 years, I'm speaking for Search AI, but for all, uh, all, all society. And uh, I'm really pleased to uh, see an institute of the Academy of Sciences that during this, say, fixing period has been able to achieve quite a lot and has risen to such a high international standards, especially in the field of social sciences. The Economics Institute is living proof that uh, Academy of Sciences uh, as the largest and more, most important non-university research institution in the uh, Czech Republic has a great deal to offer to the mutual cooperation between academics and uh, researchers on an international scale. Uh, simultaneously, it's obvious and cannot be called into question that these great achievements couldn't be attained with the, uh, without the huge contribution of uh, the Charles University as a key partner uh, in our joint effort to enhance modern economics research and education in the post-communist uh, countries of Central and Eastern Europe. In addition, the joint workplace with Charles University, one of the first such joint workplaces in the country, allowed for close integration of uh, doctoral education and research in the uh, Czech Republic. Uh, well, in, in this regard, I would like to mention that just the coexistence and cooperation of universities and institutes of the Academy of Sciences uh, is a fundamental feature of the institutional organization of research and science in, in the uh, Czech Republic. Uh, currently, there are 53 of such joint workplaces, but of different level uh, of integration, of course. The Academy of Sciences uh, with the top universities uh, in this country and with some institutions uh, of applied research form a f functional complex uh, interconnected by their staff uh, and each component of which fulfills its irreplaceable role. The academy uh, takes advantage of the synergic effects of uh, this cooperation 
to promote uh, augmentation and application of new discoveries of uh, knowledge and knowledge, the increase of level of education and the creation of the further prerequisites for the growth of, growth of competitiveness of the Czech Republic. Uh, being here in this, uh, this festive occasion, I have to emphasize that in the latest evaluation of the quality of research by the Academy of Sciences, international evaluation, the Economics Institute did really uh, very well. Uh, the quality of research here is proved also by the fact that, for example, this year uh, Jakub Steiner was awarded the prestigious Jan Evangelista Purkinje, or how they call it in English, Parkin G, but it's uh, horrible uh, to, to listen for me, uh, Jan Evangelista Purkinje Fellowship. By the way, this was the first time this fellowship was award awarded to uh, social scientists. In addition, over the years, uh, the Academy of Sciences has also recognized several young researchers with, through the Victor Le Award, uh, which is also a prestigious award for young researchers. Well, in the conclusion, uh, I therefore allow myself to express hope that today's uh, society one day will understand that the social dynamic can be identified only with the level of economic growth or with the development of technology, and that despite all of this success so far, it is not uh, only about the simple application of already existing uh, knowledge, but also about the productive continuation of research, which in this sense is always basic research. Well, I firmly believe that um, your institute will be granted at least another 20 years. Uh, let me to wish uh, you all the best, uh, prosperity, success, and I'm very pleased that the Academy of Sciences of the Czech Republic was uh, involved uh, and has been involved into this nice adventure. Thank you very much. So just as a memorandum item, I uh, spent the first uh, seven years of the uh, Economics Institutes, I was the founding director and in fact spent all that time working on bringing the two institutions together. So I very much appreciate the fact, personally, and in addition to institution, appreciate the fact that we do have uh, both Charles University and the Academy as our parent institutions. So thank you both very much as well as the founding uh, rector. Now, I will now invite Stepan Jureda to give us a brief outline overview of the events uh, that we will have in the next few days. And then, uh, as you can see, there's champagne being served here, and I'm just providing a warning, all of you will get champagne later. <laughs> but for the sake of the camera and everything, we will have a toast where you will be watching us. <laughs> but uh, the expectation is there that you will get some champagne as well. Um, just very quickly, uh, we have a lot of exciting events uh, as part of our 20th anniversary celebration. The alumni conference, which goes on throughout the weekend, uh, is about to kick off in a, in a few minutes. Uh, features some well-known economists, of course. And then on Monday and Tuesday, we're co-sponsoring several panels as part of the Forum 2000 conference. And we're bringing some of the world's most important economists to, to this city uh, to discuss issues of great import. And so you know, all of you are naturally in invited for all these events. You forgot the beer party. You got oh, to oh yeah, yeah, yeah. And there is a beer party tonight at 7 p.m. <laughs> so, uh, maybe you start with the toast. How's that? Okay. Yeah. Uh, so, um, this is naturally, a, you know, a very emotional moment. But I'm, I'm truly privileged uh, to have the opportunity here to, to thank, on behalf of the entire Sergio community, our founding fathers, without whose vision we wouldn't be here today our mother institutions, without whose continuous support, this place would be impossible. Uh, the members of our supervisory board, without, whose, you know, without selfless you know, years of, of service and, and dedication to this institution, we wouldn't be able to achieve the quality standards that we have. To the members of both of our US and the Czech Foundation board, for their ceaseless efforts to secure the funding that our students, our library need to, to do their research. And, and of course, to SIRGI faculty members, staff, some of whom have been up with us for almost the entire 20 years, to our students and to all supporters of SIRGI, thank you so much.
Asia channel. All right. So let me just add to it that uh, I'd like to also thank all of you who are friends of Sergi. I participate uh, with attendance of events. Uh, many of you have made financial contributions, which are very important. So thank you all. And I would like to invite you all to head in this direction where there will be uh, some refreshments.